Hey, what's up everyone? Paul from Grindhouse Funny House and in this video I'm going to review my first Kung Fu movie which is a, a genre where I can count on one hand how many I've seen although I've watched both seven films, trailers of Fury compilation so I feel like I've watched so many already but uh, in any case I wanted to make a point to start watching more of them and start doing reviews so my first at bat I went with 1974's The Black Dragon starring Ron Van Cleef it's about a simple Chinese farmhand and ace martial artist named Tai Lin who decides to leave for the Philippines to seek his fortune. First day there, he befriends a street hoodlum and gets a job as a dock worker. When Tai Lin discovers that the people he works for are involved in a crime syndicate that specializes in smuggling opium to China, he quits his job and joins forces with a gang of troublemakers against the evil organization. So right off the bat, if you're here just to see 7 degree black belt, 5 time world karate, Kung Fu champion and 15 time All American champion Ron Van Cleef do his thing, you'll be sorely disappointed. Uh, this was a tactic used many a times in the 70s exploitation film era, where producers would do some bait and switch by featuring someone in the movie that most people wanted to see to get asses in the seats just by looking at the posters, when in fact they were just bit players in those movies. I guess the equivalent today would be any Bruce Willis directed to video crap they released with him featured front and center on the poster when he's barely in these movies for like 10 minutes. And that's in fact how long Ron Van Cleef is in The Black Dragon, billed as uh, Ronnie Van Cleef, and legend has it nicknamed The Black Dragon by Bruce Lee himself. And obviously this movie was made uh, to cash in on the success of Enter the Dragon, which came out the year before. Uh, just for fun, I kept track of his screen time, and he's in nine scenes total. That amounts to about 10 minutes and 20 seconds of screen time in an 88 minutes movie, and they even dubbed him. My friend, I warn you we'll be back. But I gotta say, even in those 10 minutes, the man can swiftly kick anybody in the face with a plum. Uh, clearly, he had charisma to carry his own movie. And uh, this is where 1975's The Black Dragon's Revenge comes in, a sequel only in name, with a completely different story. And it seems from the trailer I watched that he's got way more screen time and they actually use this real voice. Well, you're the man behind all these punks. It's about time you showed your face. I didn't know you were interested in my face, but I am. So uh, basically The Black Dragon was the gateway movie to make me go watch the sequel and I can't wait to do that and uh, review it as well. This is a Jason Piao Pei joint, our leading man uh, playing Tai Lin, one of the dumbest kind-hearted fools from a small Chinese village, leaving for the Philippines, the big city, in this case I'm guessing Manila, to find his fortune much like his big brother did when he came back to the village to show off how good he made it. The brother loans him money so we can go on his journey and uh, we see him leave the next day with some harmonica music in the background because they're in the country and his mom uh, catches up to him, gives him shoes as a gift that will come into play later in the movie and lets him know that his brother already left back to the big city. And right away I thought, couldn't his big brother, you know, give him a lift? <laughs> he just left without saying anything? Uh, what a dick move. So he gets to the big city where the music score switches to more contemporary music for 1974. Uh, sees someone laying on the street writing in pain. No one seems to be giving a shit until a passerby lets him know that he's uh, an opium addict. We get Ron's first appearance when the Thailand stumble onto him kicking people's asses and then walks away. <laughs> Then he gets mugged but managed to get the money back from the mugger and somehow befriends him. Uh, the mugger's name is Sal Mao who helps him find a place to stay. This is why I call Tylen a dumb kind-hearted fool because in a flashback you see his mom telling him to always help his neighbors and I would have been all like fuck that noise but uh, not Tylen. The mugger steals Tylen's money again and loses it all in a dice game and that's how we get the plot moving forward as much of a, a plot that it is by Tylen's getting a job as a dock worker. First day on the job, he sees one of the workers getting the shit kicked out of him for dropping a crate in the water and he stops the beating, defends himself from the overseers wanting to kick his ass and from there he gets a promotion to become an overseer himself. He's told that his uh, Chinese Kung Fu very good. His Chinese Kung Fu is very good. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and the big fat boss uh, makes him sign a contract that's gonna bite him in the ass later on. So then at the 45 minute mark, we get the uh, obligatory whorehouse scene where his supervisor takes him to get his bang on, but also 
for us to get to see some Filipina boobies. <laughs> we see some whole business being taken care of by their whole house madam and Talon doesn't like what he sees and asks the madam not to treat like shit the whore she punishes and his supervisor buys her for him. Just hold on. All right, here's $30 and now I've paid you. It's settled, she can come with me. Satisfied? <laughs> and uh, Talon has a new girlfriend. At some point, he learns that the big fat boss is the one shipping opium to China and the troublemakers which Ron is part of are the ones in fact trying to stop him. Tai Lin confronts him at his office. Uh, the big fat boss lets him know that he can't quit because he signed a contract. You signed a contract and the contract is good for five years. If you quit now, you must pay us $100,000 as forfeit. Uh -huh. hmm? And Tynan gives in because he feels duty bound by the contract where I would have been all like, fuck that noise, peace out. But you know, apparently he's got standards to live by. Next, we see the girl that was bought for him going out on an outing with the mugger and lets him know he's onto his shit and to stop exploring Tynan's kindness and stupidity and you know, just cut that shit out. So I guess the mugger to uh, redeem himself uh, goes out at night to the big fat boss's compound, try to steal Tynan's contract and almost gets away with it, but gets busted and beaten. Uh, he gets back to the hotel, gives the contract to Tylin. As we can see, he's hurt pretty bad. And while this is all happening, we hear what's probably one of the oddest background musical cues in a kung fu movie. The theme to the young and the restless. Brother Ty? Is he going to die? Come off it. He'll pull through okay. Why? How? <laughs> There's another spot in the movie where uh, they use a cue from Ennio Morricone's Once Upon a Time in the West. Clearly the people behind this movie did not give a fuck about copyright infringement. Back to the movie, his lady friend tells him it's time to wear the uh, special shoes his mama gave him to, I guess, give him some sort of confidence. The big fat boss hires new henchmen to finish the job, i.e. kill Tylin and the troublemakers, and shock of all shocks, Tylin's brother is one of the henchmen. <laughs> His brother goes on and kidnaps his girl. His mugger friend tries to intervene but dies from his wounds. Then the very next scene, his brother gets uh, rapey with the girl. We finally get to the big showdown. Tylin arrives to the big fat boss's compound to end it once and for all. The henchman minus big brother shows up to kick his ass and I must point out how stylish the big dude with the porn stash is with his uh, yellow handkerchief around his neck. We get lots of kicking and punching, uh, some knife slash side daggers fight action as well. <laughs> That's when Ron and the Troublemaker shows up to help him kicking asses. We get the big reveal in Thailand, finding out that his brother is part of all of this. <laughs> that he killed his bought and paid for girlfriend. Uh, it ends with a showdown between the two brothers on a beach next to a dam. Tylin gets the better of his brother, but at the end chickens out and does not finish him and walks away. It's a very unsatisfying ending. A few more things. Uh, Tylin's brother beauty mark on his chin it's its own entity and could probably have its own series of film. That thing is a glorious. The mugger must have been clearly starving because we witness him eating his own boogers. This is a Dark Force Entertainment Blu-ray release. Uh, it's part of their drive-in double feature series, uh, which will be up to 11 releases as of this review. Uh, this was release number 10, paired up with uh, 1976's Enforcer from Death Row, starring Leo Fong. 
This is a new HD transfer from a, a surviving 35mm driving print in original glorious cinemascope. Uh, you do get the true driving experience with a print that is also oh filthy, a scratch faded, many jump cuts and the frames missing. But from what I can tell from seeing another version of it online, this seems to be the only print available. And Dark Force did clean it up in a way that makes it very much watchable. If you don't mind seeing a constant vertical green line on the screen or hear hissing and lots of popping in the audio track. The only bonus feature on here is uh, you get to play it in uh, the drive-in mode, which makes you enjoy the entire nostalgic show as it will play in the drive-ins complete with an iconic intermission clock. And you get uh, an HD version of the Farmer trailer, a very sought after movie that Bill Olsen from Code Red owns. And uh, lots of people on the Blu-ray.com forums wants to be released. And uh, it's playing during the intermission. And by the way, Ron Van Cleef at 77 years old is still very much alive and kicking. Go check out what he's up to at uh, ronvancleef.com for his latest projects. Matter of fact, he's even appearing in a new movie that just uh, came out a few weeks ago titled Snow Black. So would I recommend The Black Dragon? I mean, sure, if you want to see where one of the more badass kung fu movie stars had his start in, obviously Ron's very limited time in the movie is a downside. You have to sit through a lot of bad acting and dubbing, lots of quick cuts, missing frames, and dramatic fast close-up zooms to get to those scenes. But it is the charm of watching those drive-in B movies. You know what you're in for. Clearly, there's better kung fu movies that's been done, but uh, if you're a Ron Van Cleef fan or wants to become one, you need to check it out. I give it 6 ox head out of 10. That was my review for The Black Dragon. Please like, share, and subscribe. Check me out on Instagram, Reddit, and on Facebook. In the comment section below, let me know your thoughts on The Black Dragon. And also, do share your favorite kung fu movies. Might give me ideas of uh, what to watch next and review. The shirt I'm wearing is available in my store. Thought the logo was really cool, so I had to make a shirt out of it. And it just so happened I got it in the mail yesterday, thinking I was going to get it after I did this review. But as luck would have it, so that is why I'm that guy right now wearing the movie shirt. So yeah, it's available in the Grand House Fun House store. Link in the description below. Many more movie reviews in the works, so come back soon. Thank you for watching, and I'll say to you, ciao bye for now.